everybody. Welcome to TGD Today. It's Pro Golf Talk Live with you, Roy III, and George Honeycutt. So happy to have you with us in studio here in beautiful Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. HR, how are you? I'm good, buddy. How are you? Uh, doing well. If I was any better, I'd be you. So uh, that's how good it is right now. That's a preacher. Life is good. Mm-hmm. How's your golf game? My golf game is actually not bad. Not bad? Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. So I get, uh, what, 11 aside? I spot died, bro. I touched that long time. All right, babe, we got a lot going on in the pro golf world. Uh, of course, uh, we are still on cloud nine from the Open Championship at Royal Troon, and um, it's, it's going to take a while. Um, the PGA better work its tail off to try to put on a better product than uh, what we saw at the Open, so I don't think it's possible. But, you well, know, the controls will be a good test. Oh, it's, it's a great golf great course. Great track. And, it's just got a, a whole lot of history. But this week, um, I feel sorry for uh, the RBC, yeah. the Canadian. I mean, not only do they get wedged right after the Open, but uh, they get wedged between two major championships. And for a lot of these golfers, their scheduling, you know, they, they go play the, like the Scottish Open before they play the Open Championship just to get acclimated. And so I would imagine – you know, the the number of players, the marquee players, the quote-unquote A players that are skipping the RBC so they can go on to Baltusrol and get their practice in. Uh, Mickelson was just there Tuesday uh, getting his practice in. So, um, you know, it, you feel for him, but then again, too, this is the PGA Tour and where they wedged him in, you know. I don't know if they move him later next year or whatever. But, again, it is the Canadian Open. Yeah. I mean, it is their major championship in Canada. And so, um, you know, uh, hopefully, I mean, you do have the likes of Jason Day, defending champion 2015. He birdies the last three holes to win. And uh, so, you know, you'll have him defending and, and things like that. But, there, you know, there are players that could be there that aren't there because of whatever reason. Yeah. So that's all I'll say. Um but, however, we have a major championship going on. The PGA Tour champions and the Senior Tour European are, are collected today at Carnoustie. And, of course, this is the famous site that we've seen hundreds of thousands of times in John Vanderbilt, who is likewise in the field today. He is now 50 years of age. And the tournament is currently... Ongoing, they've actually finished primarily the first round, and Tom Byron is actually in the lead at the champions, the Open champions, and he has at three under par. Scott McCarron at three under, Carlos Franco at three under par, Esteban Toledo, who a good friend of yours, yes. three under par, Joe Durant also at three under with a score of 69. Then you've got Pernice, uh, Atlevy, you've got. Brad Faxton, it's good to see him start off well. Miguel Angel Jimenez was at plus two, making the turn. He was frustrated. I was watching his uh, potty language. He was not a happy camper. And then he makes birdie on 11, I believe it was. And then he eagles 12, and it was a total different person. You saw the sword coming in. And, uh, you know, and then all of a sudden he just says, hey, look, I'm having fun again. So, I'll go ahead and finish up at two under par. So, Carnoustie is holding its own. It looks gorgeous, Hugh. I mean, the wispy grass that John Vandeville got in mm-hmm. on uh, 18, it's gone. Really? They cut it down. Wow. It's gone. Now, of course, the famous burns there, which is the creek water, yeah. concrete, rock wall, that's still all there. But the wispy grass that we remember Vandeville getting into – is gone. And so I don't know if they did it for whatever reason, but they did shrink the fairway uh, where it necks in right before the burn is only 13 yards wide. It's pretty narrow. So uh, it's that's caused some problems. Uh, you know, you see the, uh, like Marco Dawson, for example, uh, he pulled one left and uh, literally he gets into some higher wispy grass and he's too 208 from the pin on uh, 17, and uh, 
he, he can't advance at 80 yards. That's unbelievable because we, you know, his nickname when we were on tour was Popeye. Oh, he's, he's his forearms huge. are unbelievable. Yeah, like Craig Perry. Oh, yeah, unbelievable. like Craig Perry. Craig Perry's forearms are the same size as his thighs. Well, that's basically Marco. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it, it, well, Marco's got a little bit more height on him, though. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. So, uh, Marco Mara continues his good play. Mark had a phenomenal uh, tournament at the Open Championship at Royal Troon. He continues that good play today. He's two under through nine. Uh, Woody Austin is at two under through seven. David Frost, at uh, he has finished for the day at one under. Bernhard Longer, definitely struggling, but, however, the expected one under par for his round today in a struggle. Uh, I know the rest of the golfers that are in this field are glad that he struggled the first day. Yeah. Otherwise, it would have been nine under par. Yeah. You know? <laughs> you know? Uh, um, there's just there's a lot of great names. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've got a lot of friends that went over to qualify and got in. And, uh, you know, it's just it's nice to see it. I mean, I, I see a name here, a guy you've never heard of, George, named Andre Bossen from South Africa, or actually Switzerland, but he was in, lived in South Africa at the time when I was down there. Great guy. You know, and he's over there playing, and, and it's just, it's cool. It's cool to see guys, you know, names you haven't seen in a long time. All of a sudden, now they're over there playing in the senior, senior Open Championship. Well, we mentioned John Vanderbilt is in the field. He just turned 50, so, and the return to Carnoustie, of course, is being populated, is being promoted, is being marketed, is being, you know, all kind of by the different golf network uh, media outlets. They are just pushing John and interviews and things like this. Well, interestingly, he goes out today, and I'm scrolling down to his posted score, which uh, was 83 plus 11 for John Vanderbilt. And uh, he, he, although he didn't shoot the worst, there are two others worse. Uh, It's uh, Chuck Milne and uh, Mike Lane were at 12 over par and 13 over par, respectively. So 83, 84, 85. Uh, you know, it just goes to show. I mean, it, excuse me. You look at, I mean, look at this. Now, Anders Forsbrand. Remember how good he uh-huh. was. You know, I mean, he shoots six over. Well, he's six over through what? Uh, I don't know where he go. Through, hey, he shot 78. Yeah, 78. He's uh, finished. You know, you, you know, you got people like Jerry Payne. Jerry Payne. There. I don't know why he's there, but he's there. Um, you know, Kyle Kovacic shoots five over. Mark's been playing pretty well. Lee Jansen. Five over par, 77. It's just, it's a tough golf course, and if it goes a little sideways, it can get ugly in a hurry, in a hurry. Well, Todd Hamilton, I thought he would do well. Uh, he's at four over par, not a good start for him. Tom Watson, of course, uh, participating this week. Uh, he's at three over par through eight, so he's kind of headed in the wrong direction. Uh, Constantino Roca is at three over par. He is finished for the day. Uh, Scott Dunlop. We all know that name, Sandy Law. We know that name. He is at two over through nine. So the names we know and love, John Daly, for example. John, of course, plays in the open. Uh, you know, about the only thing that was good about that whole event was is uh, those loudmouth pants in that he now has his wife wear a matching skirt to go along with it. So did you like that? Was that impressive? Okay, moving on. <laughs> All right. Also going on this week, you uh, we mentioned the RBC. Let's give you an update from the RBC. You got that pulled up, bud, or do I need to do no, it? I'm of course, I have to do it again. Hers five point nine million. The winners share one million sixty two thousand dollars. Luke List is out on the course right now through thirteen. He started on the back, but he is tearing up somewhat. Glenn Abbey in the fact that he is six under par through thirteen holes. Pretty impressive at 600 through 13. That's, you know, it's a good track. Ben Crane, 4 under par through 11. Uh, Matt Kuchar continues his good play. He had a decent open. Uh, I think he would want to have played better, but he had a decent open. He is at 4 under par for the tournament today. Brandon DeYoung at 4 under. Um, then you've got Kim, you've got Hodge, you've got Piercy, Stagmeyer, uh, all at 3 and 2 under par. Pat Kazire, uh, again, he is uh, two under par. One of those uh, web.com tour, you know, really shined. Came out on the PGA Tour early, made a name for himself, picked up a couple of top tens early, and uh, we all thought that Patton would be working his way onto the Ryder Cup. 
but uh, he's had some fall off. So, and that's expected your rookie year. <laughs> All the traveling, trying to figure out schedule, which courses you like, which ones you don't. It's a trial and error process, and you're going to see that. But uh, Patton's had a great year. I mean, talented young man, played at the University of Auburn. Um, you know, we're going to see a lot, hear a lot more from him here in the future. William McGirt, who came on everybody's blip screen just a couple of weeks ago with his win at, uh, of course, the Memorial, as at two under par, uh, he's still out on the course. Why Why didn't Ken Duke, uh, he would qualify for the champions, the Open champions. Not yet. What, not, not yet? yet. No? Close. He's not close? Yet. 49? Yeah, I think he's right in that name. Okay, I thought he had turned 50, so... Uh, Ryan Palmer, two under par. Kelly Craft at two under. Michael Thompson at one under. Um, Jason Day, nine holes into his first round, and he is at one under par. Defending champion Scott Pickney at one under. Zach Blair at one under. Let's see what kind of scores we have on the high end. I always like to look there, Hugh. I'm having to scroll, 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 scroll. Five over par right now is the highest. Uh, that's Colt Nost. Uh, he is through 10. Brendan Todd's also at 5 over. And Jason Gore's at 5 over. Did you realize that Cameron Pierce, he had the money qualified to get into this event? He did. Yes. He had the money qualified. See, look here. Hugh does find things every now and then. Wow. He had the money. He went through the money qualified. I could have looked till next Thursday and not found that. Yep. So, good job. But that's a, that's a, a groundbreaking little tip. I, 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 have my, I have my blips every, once every two, once every, you know, six, eight months. Okay. Well, I'm going to have you do something now on that trusty iPad that uh, should throw a little curveball at you. Okay. All right. We're about to talk about the UL Industries Championship. If we're going to Europe, I'm not even attempting to pronounce any of those things. <laughs> not even close. No. We're talking about we're talking about the LPGA Tour <laughs> and the second play <laughs> of the UL International Crown. Outside of Chicago, about 40 minutes north at Barrett Club. And uh, this is the ladies' answer to the, to the Solheim Cup. Cup. President's Cup, man. Yeah. Solheim Cup is the ladies'. The Solheim yeah. Cup is between the U.S. and Europe, yes. which is the Ryder Cup. And then they had to come up with something to bring the other Korean, Taiwan, Thailand, the, the Asian Rim, Pacific Rim, into a quote-unquote team format. So this was created, and, you know, likewise, they they got a big sponsor out of it, and so you know what? If they can create it and get this amount of support from the front end of it, although this is only the second playing of it, and what they do, you've got Korea, Austria, you've got uh, Taipei, China, USA, Japan, Thailand, and England. And uh, they go off as uh, basically twos, and one country plays another. They are in two different pools. There's a pool A and a pool B, and that's about all I understand. But uh, but I tell you what, I was listening. You know, we were sitting in the shop yesterday at Tidewater, and and we were sitting there watching the press conference with the U.S. team. Um, might be the nicest I've ever seen, Christy Kirk. Really. She, she actually was. I never saw it, but I'll have to look at it now. But, you know, talking and listening to them talk, the, the thing about this has got everybody, after last year being the initial, understanding that they've got to go out and play well every day. Because, you know, you look at the Koreans, you look at the Chinese, the, the Taipei, Thailand, Japan, and, you know, the, your Asian countries, these girls, that's pretty much who's been dominating Dominate. the LPGA. Dominate. So, you know, the U.S. has a very good team. I mean, they've got some extremely talented players. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, they're going to have to play their butts off if they want to compete in this because, I mean, you're, you look at who they're playing against. I mean, these are the girls that have been winning every week. So, I mean, it's going to be and, – and the reason that they said this thing is getting so popular, George, is because it is eight countries that's being covered by basically – the world. All these different media outlets from those eight different countries. So, excuse me. I mean, you're looking at China. Say, yeah. Say you got 30 or 40 different outlets that are there right. covering from each right. one. I mean, right. it's gotten huge. So that's why their sponsorship's gotten so big and why this thing is kind of taking off because it's being viewed all over the world, not just 
England and the United States, you know, or Europe and the United States. Well, we watched, we, we've seen just just this year and last year the, the dominance by Lydia Ko. And, I mean, she picked up her 14th win this last weekend uh, during the Open while it was going on. Uh, did many people notice? Probably no. not. Probably not. Her third win of this year. Uh, again, Lydia Ko is uh, Hall of Fame. Yep. Uh, now comes the question for her. Does she get as many wins as Annika, which is over 80? Uh, my opinion, no. Uh, although she's still, she's still a teenager. She's not old enough to rent a car. Um, I see the competition level. When Annika was there, the Pacific Rim players were not as dominant. Exactly. And since Annika's left, that's when their presence has been felt the, the greatest. And uh, it's like Lorena Ochoa. Um, you look at her brief spurt into the LPGA, phenomenal play. I mean, she was by all means number one player in the world. But I think she saw the writing on the wall that there were so many, let's say, uh, trained athletes coming up from the Pacific Rim that her dominance of the LPGA Tour and that women's golf. You know, and listen, I'm not going to argue with you, but I think... You retire after six years. What's going on? I think you're wrong. I think she wanted a family. I think she wanted to have a husband and a family. And that was that was kind of her way of doing it, and she wanted to get involved in golf in Mexico, you know, the junior golf and the upbringing. And the, sure. I mean, you know, it's, right. it's, not, for her. it's not real good down there. So I think that was a oh, lot of Oh, but it's good decision. enough to move Doral. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, I get on the train, and, and I just get interrupted. That's you know, my job. I, 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 that's that's. But I think that's why, why she. Big that's why she retired after six years. She wanted to have a family. And, yeah, and that's agree. what she's done. I agree. I don't think she would if she'd have stayed in it. I don't think it would have made a difference in the world. She'd have stayed number one because there wasn't anybody could beat her. Um, she so was that good. Look at here, he is alive. She was that good, Mr. Jim Felder. Jim Felder, playing professional himself. himself. But that's, that's why she stepped down. I agree. I agree. But that's when we saw this Pacific Rim sure. really kick it in. It opened the door for the next person. Well, it gave start. those that says, okay, now we somebody's got to fill in that number one position. I'm going to do it. Who wants it bad? And I can't speak English, but I'm going to do exactly. it. Exactly. So now we've seen Lydia Ko, um, you know, the Christy Kerrs have been around forever. I think Christy is, what, 70 now? Um I mean, it just feels like she's been there for 35 years. She's been a great player for a long time. But, you know, she's – the thing is, you've got her, and, and, you know, you've got Stacey Lewis, who's an absolute doll. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's just a sweetheart. You know, you've got Lexi Lexi Thompson, Thompson, who everybody wants to look at. The bomber. Yeah. The bomber. I mean, she just pounds it. And then, you know, then you've got Pilar. I mean, we've got a solid – Jarena, you know, with Jarena Pillar on this – she has played her way onto this. And we've got a solid team, but they're going to have to play their butts off. They are. If you look at the influence of the just the the Pacific Rim players themselves, they're hurt. Okay. You want to come join us on there? No? He's dressed for it. He's looking down. Good stuff. By the way, Jim, Jim and I have another match this Saturday against Mermaid and Shuey. At uh, Possum Throw. It could get ugly. I, they asked for another stroke. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. So. <laughs> delusions of grandeur. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. I got my partner. He's going to carry me. There you go. He, and he's so small frame, too. I don't know how he does it for 18 holes. Because he's got Especially me on his back and my back. Old. At 85, I know. He's got me on his back and my golf bag. And you know how big my golf bag is. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was a hernia waiting to happen. <laughs> All right, so the girls have started off here. They are out in their matches right now. Webb and O are through seven. Uh, the, uh, Thompson is playing with Kerr. Lewis is playing with Pillar. They are against Sadoff, Clyburn, Hall, and Reed from England. So they are through three and two, respectively. Uh, we're not getting.
getting much updates. They as don't far tell as you how they stand. That's though. right. That's right. Isn't that strange? That's very strange. So yeah. I was just looking for it. Yeah. Isn't that strange? So, whatever. So, we can only report on the information that we're given. Right. So, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. So, again, we got the RBC Canadian. We've got the Senior Tour that's uh, playing their Open Championship in um, at the famed it would be Scotland at Carduste. At Carduste. How neat was it, real quick, and real quick, Jeff, uh, how neat was it with Royal Troon? And come to find out, I spoke to a member, and during their member guest and their member member tournaments, uh, they do head to head at uh, with Prestwick. Yeah. And so they'll go out and play nine on Royal Troon, and then they just walk right over and play nine at Prestwick. Yeah, you go play the back nine on Prestwick, you try to play the front nine coming back, and then you finish on Troon. I mean, they're literally right there. To is, is that I mean, you fantastic. saw there's the coverage. I mean, they do the, the aerial coverage. You see them both right there. Right. And, yeah. and of course, just on the other side of that is the runway. Yeah. So, <laughs> and it, and like I said, in Presswick, the only, only golf course I've ever played with a blind par three. I never forget walking on that tee, George. No joke. Standing there with our caddies, just pouring down the rain. One caddy's cussed himself because he's got no. Hey. Oh, there we go. That's, that's my boy. He's got feelings for us. He does. He, he's good about that. But we get there. I wish I could get him on the air. And Alan Dole's caddy, Bert, he's sitting there cussing himself. This guy had to be nine because he didn't have his rain suit. Man. And I, we get to this tee box. He said, okay, it's a seven iron. I'm like, where's the hole? He goes, you see that box on top of that hill? I said, yeah. He goes, hit it over the red part, which is the left side. <laughs> get up there and I'm like, all right, Donnie, where's my ball? He goes, I think it's in the hole. You get up and say, I made a hole in one, never saw it. Hit it over the box. He goes, that's perfect. That happened to be. Now, whether somebody went over and threw it in the hole, is, I don't know. Because you had to walk around the hill to get to the green. Ah, uh, okay. But it's a really cool part. Wow. Yeah, but they don't use it anymore for whatever reason. Length. It's not really whatever. long. And, and it's got a lot more bunkers in the middle of fairways that you don't know are there. Mm. So a lot of blind bunkers. You know, I think you hit a perfect shot the cat and go, you hit it at that spire. And you, and and you hit one, so but okay, it's good. And he goes, oh, gosh. Go but it's it. the home of the Open Championship. I mean, oh, yeah. 145 years ago, they played the first one there. and uh, But it was just neat that they, they gave it the tribute. They did the, the, the mm-hmm. memorial to it in video. And uh, I thought that was good. It that is. Was good and stuff. I mean, the 18th hole's driving. That's, That's what golf's all about. I mean, you, nowadays, he's got his iron on it. Yeah. All right, you've been listening to Pro Golf Talk Live right here on TGD Today, thegolfdirector.com. Uh, that's the network you need to be at to get all this latest and greatest information and hear you talk about how it was to play Prestwick in the 20s. So uh, that's always a good thing. TGD Radio and TV are produced and broadcast by the Zeus Digital Network for thegolfdirector.com. Be sure to check out our featured course pages where you'll find up-to-date information about course conditions, specials, much more. Need help with your next golfing vacation? Just call Dave right here. You can reach us here at the Golf Director at 844-GO-GOLF-1, 844-464-6531. All of our programming is archived for listening and viewing on demand. Just click on the TGD radio or the TGD TV tabs in the menu screen right there at thegolfdirector.com. You can find us on over one billion devices at iTunes, Audio Realm, TuneIn, YouTube, Ustream, Roku, Periscope, and Blueberry, and of course, Facebook. Facebook. This is George Honeycutt for Hugh Roy III, for Jeff Gilder behind the glass. I want to thank you for joining us today, but don't go anywhere. There's a lot more golf news and information coming up next. <laughs>